you know, we are all members of the life science industry, and uh, I think the challenges you know that we are seeing today are are enormous, and we need to make use of all stakeholders. You know, might it be a sponsor, a pharma company, a biotech company, a CRO, but also you know from other institutes like academics, you know, or the entire public sector, because the challenges that we are seeing today uh, um, are very big, and uh, I think you know this can be something you know that we really can only achieve as a team. I would say. Yeah, I completely agree. I think there are shared goals and that really brings everyone together. For example, you could think of enrollment in trials and trial awareness that only gets louder and broader and more. There only becomes more awareness when we work together. Something like high throughput centers, you know, that really has an opportunity to target a lot of people at once and really get awareness out there. So pursuing those uh, partnerships is really important, I think, on both sides. I think, you know, I'm always quite impressed, you know, when I see, you know, how carefully decisions are prepared, you know, before they are made, you know, within the public sector. I think that's something which is different because you're actually acting, um, you know, with the money of the population yeah, and uh, of taxpayers at the end of the day. And I think that's a that's a different game, you know, compared to a company which is uh, um, publicly funded or privately funded. And I think that's something, you know, which is a major differentiator and that's something where industry like technology companies, but also pharma companies, biotech companies can really learn from public sector, uh, you know, when it's coming to preparing and making decision uh, properly. Within our industry, as an industry player on the, um, on the um, private side, um, you know, we are definitely faster in terms of, you know, trying new things. And uh, so, you know, trying things out, failing fast, you know, and then adjusting your goals. I think that's something, you know, where you can really, as a team or as a partnership, you know, can really learn from each other. But I think it's a, it's a classical win-win situation that I see, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think from the industry side, being part of ACRO, you know, we bring a lot of technology companies and CROs together as a forum to kind of speak with one industry voice when we go and meet with the public sector. And I think, you know, Metadata being one of our members, we're really on the cutting edge of development in terms of digital, you know, you see... Um, e-consent, EDC, e-signatures, they're really pushing that forward and going to speak with regulators and kind of having that open dialogue really just helps things move forward in a way that it wouldn't if they were just completely siloed all the time and only coming together when, you know, an application was filed or something like that. I'm always super impressed about the progress that we made within uh, um, AIDS research. So, you know, when I was a young man, AIDS or being HIV was basically a death penalty. And, um, and that was a serious thing, you know, you know, when I was a young man. And, uh, and this has massively changed, you know, due to the effort of various stakeholders, of various parties. Uh, I think without uh, support of, for instance, Gates Foundation, Welcome Fund, you know, which are not the classical pharma sponsors or CROs. So those are uh, organizations, you know, who are, uh, who were founded, you know, you know, to do these breakthroughs within research. I think this is one of the biggest successes that we have seen, you know, when we are talking about public-private partnerships. I think so. I think especially now when you're seeing patients more informed than they ever have been before, they know a lot of things about what their treatment should look like or what matters to them on like an outcome kind of level. And so having them involved and life sciences is just, like you said, multi-stakeholder. It's not just two big groups here. It's I don't know, the number could be 10, it could be way more. So I think patients really have a really important role to play. I mean, it is their treatment that we're talking about at the end of the day. And I think that's one of the biggest advantages within our industry, because usually, um, you know, when you're working within this concept of a public-private partnership, you know, it's very difficult to align visions, missions, strategies, because there are so many parties involved from the private side, but also from the public side. In healthcare or in life sciences, it's relatively easy. You just need to put the patient into the center of everything you do. Yeah? And uh, I think you know, that's one of the biggest advantages that we're having compared to other industries, um, because you know, all the effort that all stakeholders, all parties are putting into such a uh, multi-stakeholder project you know, is intended to help patients and ultimately you know, to bring drugs to patients faster. I think there are good examples in terms of, you know, what, um, you know, larger organizations like, for instance, the European Union can do in order to make sure, you know, that we are all working into one direction, you know, and one is digitalization, for instance. So there are certain standards, uh, you know, there are certain ways, you know, how we want to execute on projects. And I think that's something where organizations like the EU 
um, but also other you know, large um, farmer organizations like FPIA can help us in order to find a one-way road in order to achieve the best outcome. I mean, I think speaking on behalf of ACRO and so, you know, representing a large number of CROs kind of on a global scale, our biggest goal is to just kind of create a very feasible business environment that makes doing, managing the trials as easy as possible. So they're nice and streamlined and there aren't too many questions along the road and you know what you're doing when you go in. So for us, it's really important to keep an open feedback loop with the regulators, whether they're in the U.S. at FDA or over here with EMA or anyone else over here. So I think for us, you know, just recognizing that if there is constant conversation and dialogue, you're never you're always kind of collaborating, even if it's very informal. There's just always a way to check in and be like, we're working on this. What are your thoughts on that? Is this something that you can see us being able to work into whatever regulatory framework you might be working on? For example, right now, you know, there's a lot of work around real world evidence, real world data. FDA and EMA are both putting out frameworks on this and asking for public consultation. So just making sure that we always have a voice in those instances. I think speaking for the private sector, having never been in the public sector, um, it's really important, and I think we've been seeing it a lot with ACRO members, is getting them to understand the importance of coming together and how speaking with one large industry voice instead of individual company voices, you can get a lot done and you can do it in one meeting, coming in with four different member companies and speaking as one. We're already seeing those kind of uh, accelerations. And uh, so we, for instance, we are um, working together with various sponsors uh, by building up, for instance, synthetic control groups, you know, which is basically um, a methodology to um, to enrich an, a control group within a clinical trial, you know, and this is based on data that we have collected together with our customers, and uh, and that's something you know where you know where you can really see um, there are big advantages in terms of collaborating uh, because actually you know um, sponsors and biotech company they need to give their consent in order to make use of this anonymized data. And this is something you know, which is massively accelerating clinical trials uh, already today. I think from the ACRO perspective, in terms of what we're working on to really impact the trial specifically, um, in the UK, we've done some work recently with MHRA around decentralized trials, which are becoming much more of a reality with the amount of wearables that are out there. Um, and in the US, we're doing some work with the FDA in the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research on risk-based monitoring. So that's really going to impact you know, how trials are I mean, it's in the title, how they're monitored. And that will really kind of overhaul the system for a lot of people. So just kind of making sure that we're all on the same page and understand where these things are going and we can have that strong collaboration there, I think is what we're really working on right now. I think you're bringing up a very important point because the challenges that we are seeing are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, so we are now starting to look into areas uh, you know, where we haven't focused on the past year. So we are looking into rare diseases or things, you know, which, you know, might not be that beneficial for a pharma company to look into, you know, but when you're doing this as a team, you can actually bundle your efforts in order to achieve the best outcome. And uh, I just want to highlight, um, you know, one thing, you know, and I think, you know, you both talked about this. Uh, the regulators are extremely open. I would rather even say, you know, they are pushing us in order to apply innovation. and. Uh, this is different compared to just a couple of years ago because they are seeing the opportunity that we can do together as a team um, you know, for patients in order to achieve better outcomes faster. But somewhere like antimicrobial resistance right now, we're seeing a big drive on that and a lot of collaboration in the UK with the um, National Action Plan. And then in the US, we have the um, HHS. There's a bunch of working groups on it right now with the Department of Health and Human Services. And so I think both sides of the pond are really pushing together on this to kind of, this is something that really will impact people if we don't do something about it. And you kind of understand that now. And that's another area of commonality where we're just pushing forward. And it's promising and good to see. I would say I hope to see us kind of continuing down the path we've gone on. I mean, the two-sided acknowledgement from the public sector and the private sector of the importance of coming together early, as we've mentioned a few times today, if we just keep on that path, I think it will only get better from here. We've started to break down some of the silos. They definitely still exist, and there's a lot of work to do. But I think we're moving in the right direction, and things will only get better from here. Uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic because you know, that all stakeholders, all participants in this concept are realizing you know, that it's, 
that is good and useful and important, you know, to put the patient into the center of everything we do. So making everything that we do patient centric is is enormously important. And um, I think you know we are we are all realizing this, and um, you know we are all going into one direction nowadays. And I think you know that's very promising. Uh, you know we're seeing a lot of uh, cross-party collaborations from academics to pharma companies. Uh, um, you know, with a very active engagement of ARCO and of regulators. Uh, this is very, very promising. I think, you know, we can all expect a lot very positive messages over the next upcoming years. <laughs>